Hey guys, the Mentor Master Studios here. How y'all doing? Welcome to my 200 subscriber Q&A video. Last week, I made an announcement video asking you guys to ask me questions down in the comment section of that video. And in today's video, I am answering all the questions that you guys asked me. And just like I said during that announcement video, I want to thank you guys so much for getting my channel up to 200 subscribers. Whether you're someone who's been watching my channel for a while or if you're a brand new subscriber, again, I just want to say thank you so much for getting this channel up to 200 subscribers. And so with all that, let's get into these questions. The first question that we have is, can you do stop motions of Ninjago? Honestly, when it comes to stop motions for Ninjago, I am open to the idea of doing that, and I have considered doing stop motions on my channel a couple times. That being said, though, if I were to make stop motion videos for Ninjago, I don't think I would end up doing these massive multi-part storylines, and instead I would probably have any storylines being kept to one or maybe two videos, and again, I wouldn't be doing anything like a fan-made series. But once again, when it comes to the idea of doing stop motion videos for Ninjago, like I said, I am open to the idea. Also, the person who asked this question, The Mysterious Shadow, asked me a question in my recent video going over my hopes for Ninjago United, asking if I would do mocks for Ninjago. And my answer to that is the exact same thing as my answer to the stop motion question. Once again, I am open to the idea of doing mocks. However, I'm not entirely sure if I will end up doing any mocks in the future. But again, like I said, I am open to the idea. The next question that we have is, How did you like the crystallized season, and how would you make the season if you were in charge of it, and how many old characters would you bring back instead of the wild brain characters? We got a lot to unpack here. So for starters, when it comes to my thoughts on Crystallized, I've made it pretty clear on my channel that I don't like Crystallized. I think that Crystallized is honestly one of the worst seasons in the show, and I have a lot of issues with the season. In fact, at the time of me making this video, I'm actually currently working on doing a re-review of Crystallized containing all of my updated thoughts on the season, and I'm going to be releasing that at some point in the future, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. As for the changes that I would make if I were in charge, there's a lot of changes that I would make to Crystallized, so I'll go over some of the bigger ones. For starters, I would definitely change things related to Nia's Samurai X storyline. I don't think that was handled well during the season, especially during Part 2. I would make a lot of changes to Lloyd's dynamics during the season, mainly because him fixating on the idea of Harumi changing, while at the same time him being actively against the idea of Garmadon changing, didn't make any sense at all to me. And finally, I would just not have Harumi in the season. I honestly feel like a lot of the scenes that revolved around her weren't handled that well during the season, especially when it came to stuff related to Lloyd. And overall, like I said, there are more changes that I would make to the season, but those are definitely the bigger ones. And when it comes to swapping out Wild Brain characters for older characters, honestly, I didn't really have any issue with all the Wild Brain characters that were in this season, because when it comes to Crystallized, it's basically meant to be the conclusion to the Wild Brain era of the show, so I feel like it honestly makes a lot of sense that all these Wild Brain characters showed up during the season. That being said, if I were to swap out any characters, honestly, I would remove Fuji Dub from the season, and in his place, I would put Nanakan. This is mainly because Nanakan was originally going to be in the season, and if Nanakan was in the season, then this means that we would have gotten a proper rival character for Jay during the season. And that's pretty much it. I wouldn't really swap out any other Wild Brain characters for older characters. Next question that we have is, what is your favorite video you've made on your channel? Honestly, my favorite video that I've made on my channel would honestly have to be my Lloyd X Aikido Where We Belong video. That video honestly means a lot to me. I've made it pretty clear on my channel that Lloyd and Akita's storyline during the Ice Chapter is my favorite storyline in all of Ninjago, and when it comes to the song that I use in that video, Where We Belong, it is my favorite song from the game Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which happens to be my favorite game of 2022. 
and when it comes to that song, after listening to it for a bit, I realized that the song actually fits really well at describing Lloyd Nikita's story over the events of the Ice Chapter. Plus, at the same time, that was the first ever music video that I made on my channel, and honestly, I really like how the video turned out. Next question that we have is... 1. What are your thoughts on the LEGO Ninjago movie? And 2. Who is your favorite Ninjago YouTuber? When it comes to my thoughts on the movie, I haven't really talked about the movie that much on my channel, so when it comes to the movie, overall I think it's alright. I feel like as a movie and as a Lego movie, it works pretty well, but as a Ninjago movie, it really isn't that good with a lot of inaccuracies when compared to the show. That being said, there are some things about the movie that I do honestly really enjoy. Stuff like the animation and the music, I honestly thought that Garmadon was pretty funny during the movie, and honestly, I really enjoyed the way that Lloyd was handled during the film. I definitely liked him. And when it comes to the stuff that I didn't like, the main things were the rest of the ninja. I don't think they were handled that well. And in comparison to every other LEGO movie, this one is definitely the least funny compared to all the other LEGO movies. But overall, when it comes to the Ninjago movie, like I said, I honestly think it's good, but I don't think it's that great of a film overall. As for my favorite Ninjago YouTuber, that would have to be Krusty783. I think that Krusty has made a lot of really good content, and I think that Krusty has made a lot of really good points when it comes to the show. I especially really like a recent video that he made where he talked about Lloyd during the events of Crystallized, and I agree with what he said during the video because, like I said earlier, I don't think Lloyd was handled well during the season. I also really liked his video where he talked about the episode Last of the Formlings because that is one of my favorite episodes in the show. And overall, when it comes to Krusty, like I said, I feel like he's honestly made a lot of really good content, and he is definitely my favorite Ninjago YouTuber. The next question that we have is, can we please see your background? Sure, let me just get out of the way for you guys. And here you go. This is my background. I have a lot of Ninjago sets, as you can see. And this isn't every single Ninjago set that I own, but these are a bunch of sets that I wanted to display. I know it's hard to see all the sets given how close a lot of them are to each other, and plus I'm right in front of a lot of the sets. But still, overall, there's a lot of sets that I really like when it comes to everything. And in fact, here's one other thing I'm going to do for you guys. Here is a close-up look of my background, containing a whole bunch of minifigures and sets. And finally, for the last question that we have, what did you think of Quest for the Lost Powers? Honestly, when it comes to Quest for the Lost Powers, overall, I think it's alright, honestly. I did enjoy most of the stories that we got during this book. Kai's was the only story that I didn't like, mainly because it was just a repeat of his Season 11 arc. But when it came to the rest of the stories, I honestly really liked them. Especially Zane's storyline, because this gave us a proper conclusion to the Ice Emperor storyline. I definitely really, really liked that. However, I'm not the biggest fan of this book, because honestly, I definitely would have preferred it if we saw this stuff in the actual show, instead of having all this stuff being relegated to a book. Especially since the final episode of Crystallize set up this idea of the ninja losing their powers and them having to get their powers back at some point. And I'm thinking, if that storyline is relegated to a book, then why set it up during the show? Why not use that time for other things during the episode? So again, overall when it comes to the book, I think it's alright because I enjoyed most of the stories. But honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of how we got these stories in a book, and honestly, I would have preferred it if we got this stuff in the actual show. And so that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Like I said at the beginning of the video, thank you guys so much for getting this channel up to 200 subscribers. I couldn't have done this without you guys, and I really hope that you guys are looking forward to my content in the future. And by the way, in case any of you guys are wondering, yes, I do plan on making more Q&A videos at some point in the future, and I really hope that you guys are looking forward to those. 
And that's all I got for you guys. Later guys, this is Dimension Master Studios, signing off.